Broadcasting live from somewhere underneath the ground. Archaeology News, the news you can trust. So we go to Egypt for our first story, which offers a fresh new look into how and why the pyramids and some of the structures around them were built. Because there have been quite a few theories thrown around about that, and let's just say those have been of variable quality. Specifically, we're going about a 45-minute drive south of the very well-known pyramids at Giza to a slightly less well-known site called Saqqara, where we find the Step Pyramid of Djoser. And though it is not quite as well-known as its neighbors to the north, this Step Pyramid is actually the oldest of the big guys, having been built about 4,500 years ago. And if you take a look at the picture, you can see that this is before they had mastered the art of getting those like smooth pyramid shapes like you find at Giza. Hence, it's a step pyramid. Well, according to a pre-publication paper that's circulating around, contrary to the previous theories which involve a lot of levers and pulleys and ramps, the step pyramid of Djoser was actually at the center of a giant hydraulic system, which is how it was built. Now, I know you have all heard the term hydraulic, but what exactly does it mean? Well, quite simply, it just involves moving liquid through a confined space under pressure, usually to produce some kind of lift or movement in order to do a task. So how did this supposedly all work? Well, the paper relied mostly on geospatial and satellite data of Saqqara and the area around it, as well as the actual structure of the pyramid itself and structures around it. It begins pointing out that Egypt around 5,000 years ago was significantly wetter than it is today. And although the climactic conditions at the exact time that the pyramid was built cannot really be known, it's believed that they were more of a you know, savanna or semi-arid kind of thing as opposed to the bone-dry desert you have today. And just to the west of the Saqqara Plain, there is a feature called Abu Sir Wadi. Now, if you remember from that news story we did some time ago about Oman, wadis are these valleys that are found in deserts in the Middle East. And during the freak rain or if there's a rainy season, they collect water uh, that can create an oasis or actually a dangerous flash flood. This, for example, is one that I visited in Oman. And this Abu Sir Wadi is supposedly at a 1% gradient above Saqqara. Now, that doesn't sound like much to me, but according to people who study water systems and hydraulic systems and watersheds, well, that can actually create a significant water flow downhill. And said water flow would have headed straight for the Step Pyramid of Djoser. But this brings up the potential answer to another mystery. You see, as is visible in this shot, the Step Pyramid of Djoser is surrounded by other outbuildings. And there's one that I don't remember seeing called Jizr al-Mudir. Well, it's not surprising that I don't remember this Jizr al-Mudir, because it's supposedly not that much to look at, just a few rough-hewn walls creating a low enclosure, and it's a few hundred meters to the west of the Step Pyramid. However, that would have put it right in the way of that flowing water. And using GIS, the researchers constructed a map showing that this structure could have served as a dam. And in fact, the low walls and the basin they created could have served to filter out some of the larger sediments in the water. And the whole structure could have taken advantage of the natural gradient that it's on to do this. Which wouldn't make it totally unique, because there have been a few other dams found from this time in ancient Egypt, including Saad el Kafara which is just about 20 kilometers to the southeast of Saqqara. So that would explain the mystery. You see, before this, nobody quite knew what to make of Jizr el-Mudir. Some people even said it was a cattle enclosure. This actually explains it with some kind of clear purpose in mind. And from Jizr el-Mudir, the water would have flowed into what today is known as a dry moat around the pyramid, except with all this water, it wouldn't have been dry in ancient times. And connected to that moat is a series of well-constructed trenches, now underground, 
that have a series of compartments that also could have served to sift some of the sediments out and purify the water as well. The whole thing would have created a system that looks something like this, with the moat and the trenches surrounding the pyramid. Now here's the key to the whole thing. You see, in the side of the trench facing the pyramid, there had previously been found some incompletely excavated niches that the authors hypothesize actually led to a pipe that led under the pyramid. And now there had already been found inside of the pyramid, conclusively, series of shafts and pipes um, that might have connected to this hypothesized pipe, creating a large connected water system. And so the authors contend that this internal water system within the pyramid, fed by the well-organized uh, system outside of the pyramid, would have created a hydraulic system, whereby at the center of the pyramid, which was hollow, there would have been a hydraulic lift that served to lift those heavy stones up, and in a way the pyramid was kind of built inside out. Incredible. Now, this is all unproven, but even if it's not true, we already know that the ancient Egyptians put us to shame with how technologically advanced they were. But anyway, what do I think of this story? Well, it's difficult to say because this is just a first draft of the article. It has not been peer-reviewed yet. And quite honestly, a lot of the engineering and hydraulic stuff, that's really above my pay grade to evaluate. However, it does make a lot of sense they use a few different sources of evidence and some corroboration from contemporaneous sites. And really, with how advanced those ancient Egyptians were, I would not put this past them. However, there are a couple of gaps. So far, this is all circumstantial. We need to have a close look at some of the direct archaeological evidence. Specifically, and the authors do note this in their conclusion, we need to see the microscopic sediment samples and analysis of areas like the Great Enclosure and the other places that the water flowed through. You see, if all of this water was brought down to a wadi, which sometimes would have had flash floods, it would have brought sediments, minerals, or maybe even microfossils that were really not native to the Saqqara Plain, but came from somewhere upland. Suspect number one for investigation would definitely be that enclosure. Considering that was supposed to filter these sediments out, we should find some of them there. And second, although these pyramids have been so thoroughly examined and documented over the years, by definition, those incompletely excavated niches have not been. So we should have a look at those. Now, I can imagine how difficult it is to get a permit to do that, but that is so key, that is something that does need to be tied up for us to be confident of this hypothesis. Basically, we need to know, do those niches lead into a pipe underneath the pyramid or not? So, do I think this hydraulic scenario thing is super likely? Ah, no, but that's very creative. But hey, I definitely think it's plausible, and this further evidence I've just mentioned could really help prove it. Hell, if the Greeks built a computer more than 2,000 years ago, anything's possible. Hey, if you like what you heard, give me that thumbs up below, hit that bell to subscribe, or if you want to support more independent archaeology content, consider contributing to my Patreon, where you can enjoy some exclusive members-only benefits and other goodies. Until the next dig.